bring in you the 12th and last of our mini flow series. Yay, we made it. Now, before we go into the mini flow, um, I do recommend that you warm yourself up a little bit more because um, we are going to do um, a sit bone balancing flow once again down on the mat. So heat yourself up a little bit more, especially if you have um, tight, tight hamstrings. Um, and we are going to be using a yoga strap, but barring a yoga strap, if you don't have any of those, I am going to be using a scarf. No, this is not a magic trick, <laughs> but I have a big scarf here, a bandana, just fold it in half in a, in a big triangle and just roll it. Or maybe you want to tuck in the small end so that it's not um, hanging when you do your flow. And you have this, and this is a, as good as any yoga strap, especially with the flow that you're going to do. Um, so prepare your strap, your homemade bandana strap, handkerchief strap, or maybe an old um, necktie, not the favorite one of your husband or partner or son, yeah, <laughs> not their favorites, and just place them beside your mat. So after your, your warm-up session, come down on the mat, sit down, bring your makeshift strap close to you. Now do this obliquely so you can see the angles. By the way, if you need to pad your sit bones and your tailbone, your coccyx, please do. Fold up a towel or if you have a thin cushion. And you can also do this by the wall so that when we lift our legs up, adjust yourself, yeah? Feel for the distance of the wall, however, it needs to be for your balance because we are going to be lifting the legs up from a cobbler's pose to this one. Can you see me? And if you need that wall just to, um, to protect you from falling all the way down. But once again, if you can see me, my neck is a little bit um, dropped down to my um, collarbone here. So I need to adjust myself so that when I roll back, I'm not in this pose. So I hope you can see um, the difference of that. So you can bring yourself close to the wall. Anyway, let's get to it, yeah? Sit down on the mat, feet down, hands on your shins, and just curl into a seated child's pose. Just curling the body first here. Then let's have some seated child's pose waves. Holding on to your legs, allow your knees to open up a little bit. Your feet can be one hip with distance apart, by the way. With the spine up, bend in and up, chest up, head up, feel the strength of your back. Exhale, pull yourself in close, belly close to your thighs. Allow that compression to help that exhalation, yeah? Curling it. Inhale with an up. It's hard to talk there, but exhale. Pulling yourself in. Feeling the air being pushed out. And one more. Inhale, leave now. We'll do this smoother in a bit. Don't worry. Exhale. By now you know that. Hopefully you do. From here, waving yourself up. Hands hold on to your feet on the outside um, of hands, on the blades of your feet, your hands, your arms can be on the inside of your legs, but you are going to be shifting, shifting them outside later, yeah? From here, lift the feet up in a floating cobbler's pose. Lengthening the body here, trying not to collapse the sternum inside. From here, feel for your balance, feel for the distance that you need, um, between yourself and the wall in a good distance, yes? Yeah? So you're, you still feel this floating sensation. And as I mentioned, don't let your head drop down this way into your chest. Keep an open neck. 
From here, lengthen your legs forward and up. Holding on to your feet. Open the legs out. If you can notice my ankles, my ankles are plantar flexed, so straight front of the ankle, but the toes are flicked. Lengthening up. Hug and lift. The hug and lift sensation is as if, imagine yourself like a clay sculpture and you're being squeezed in and up. The whole 3D of your body, all your muscles are either lengthening but strong or shortening, contracting and still strong. From here, keep your right leg where it is, lift it up. Bend your left knee, bring that leg close to you, yeah? So you are already in a floating Janusurshasana, head to knee pose. From here, very slowly, allow your lower leg to come down first, down on the mat, and then support yourself with your, with your free hand, with your left hand here if you need to, right leg comes down on the mat. Don't allow that heel, especially here, yeah, to thud down. Very bad for the heel. But come into this pose. If you can keep your hand on your foot, that's really good. Get your strap, bring it around the balls of your feet. Not on your toes, not on the sole of your foot, on the bases of your toes. Shoulders come level with the floor, so there's a little bit of a twist here. Allow your hands to slide on the strap. Wave your body up because the body will come into this hunched position here, this curved position. Let's lengthen up, belly in and up, chest up, head up, lengthening up the body here. If you want to come lower, keep the back straight. Just walk your hands or or wind your hands around your strap, your makeshift strap, and pull yourself low. But don't overdo this, yeah? We don't want that tearing sensation in the um, soft tissues, your ligaments and your tendons, especially around the knee, especially behind the knee, to get stressed, yeah? We never stress them, we never force them into a lengthened state. From here, soften the arms, release the pose, release your strap, bend your right knee, and come back into a seated child's pose. Now let's add a few more floating poses here. Feet up, coming into a seated, floating seated child's pose. Dorsal flex your ankles, 90 degrees through the ankles so that your hands can reach the blades of your feet. Adjust your legs, widen them, and come into a floating Badakonasana, floating cobbler's pose. Lengthen the legs up, while keeping them together still. Plantar flex the ankles, so straight fronts of the ankles, but flick the toes. Opening up, nice and wide, or choose the angles that you want. If your knees need to bend here, and the ankles need to bend as well, um, if the hamstrings, the muscles, and the soft tissues are still tight, by all means, stay here. This is good, yeah? Or lengthen up, up to you. Right knee bends, bring that heel really close to the body. Stay here for one full breath. Right leg lands down, right hand releases to support the transition, that landing down of your left leg. Get your strap, shoulders. It's a small turn, a small twist of the body, so the left side of the body is in line with your left leg. Hands on your strap, around the balls of your foot. Wave the body up, belly up. 
chest up, head up. You can stay high here. You don't have to go all the way down into a deep Janu Sirshasana. Feel the strength of your back. Feel that lengthening behind your leg, back line of your leg. And even the front line of the body, the deep core line, which is really important, it's hugging and lifting your perineum, your psoas, the erectus spinae, the muscles along, up and down the spine, your neck muscles, and exhale, relax, release. Bring your legs in, floating, child's pose, feet up or feet down, hands on the blades of your feet, floating cobbler's pose. Lift the legs forward and up, keeping them together. Separate the legs, small or wide letter V. Right knee bends, floating Janu Sushasana, floating head to knee pose. Left leg lands, left hand down as you bring your right leg down on the mat. Get your strap, bring them around the balls of your foot and wave the spine up. A high Janu Sushasana is good in this, in this flow. So the body is in a right angle on your hips. Release the pose. One more on the left side. Bring your legs in. Floating or landed seated child's pose. Hands between your legs on the blades of your feet, floating cobbler's pose. Lift the legs up, center, keeping them together. Open your legs. Bend your right knee, bring it in, heel close to the body, floating head to knee pose, the more open version, right leg down, tilt the body forward, right hand, bracing yourself so this left leg doesn't thud down, right hand gets the strap around the ball of your foot, soften the body here, and then wave up, belly in and up, chest up, head up. It's really nice and grounding and quieting, this pose, but deeply strengthening. It engages not just your body, but your mind and your emotions as well. Teaches you to accept where you are in your state and then pushing a little bit forward if you want to and that's your new baseline, that's your new edge. And release. And come into a soft or more open cross-legged position, right hand on your heart space, left hand on your belly and have a few full breaths here. <sighs> you can even sigh it out if you want to. And if you want to come down on the mat and finish with um, a short Shavasana or as long as you want to, really it's up to you, you're welcome to do so. Or if you want after your breathing, your equilibrating breath. That just means um, the same heart rate for your inhalation and exhalation. Yeah? After you've done that, you can get up from your mat 
and go up, get on with your day. <laughs> or if you did this at the end of your day, then wind down the day as you do. Thank you very much and I hope you enjoyed our mini flow challenge. Please refer back to them if you are a, a, a strong everyday um, practice yogi. Then you can choose one, do it for one week and then change it up for the next week. And that's already, that's already 12 weeks worth of um, mini flows and then rinse and repeat. And you have a great variety there already. Thank you very much and it has been a pleasure. Well done on finishing your class. I hope you enjoyed that. And remember, if you want ad-free premium versions of this class, the entire library of classes, not all of the channels are going to appear here on YouTube, and the course and workshop channels as well, and the workshop sheets, um, which some of which are exclusive to the Mad Yogi Club members. So come and join me on our website, madyogi.net, and I will see you in the next class. Bye!